I, I will say that this whole thing of the children and the people that get into Scientology at a very, very young age, they know nothing else. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bring up a sensitive yeah. subject because it's right exactly on that line, mm -hmm. which is I was 14 when I started in Scientology. And um, I had a boss who was 35 years old. He was married. And um, he had me stay back, you know, when everybody else left. And basically, we had sex. This was statutory rape. It's handled internally. It happened to me, so therefore I must have done something that caused it. And, you know, and, and at the time, being a child, I, I was innocent. I was you innocent. Believed it, though. You yeah, believed I believed that it. You I believed were it. Not a victim. You yeah. believed that you were. You had done something. That's wrong right. To have deserved that. Yeah. I wanted to just do what was right. Yeah. You know, and they were the authorities. So it's difficult to hear this story of a young 14-year-old girl who was taken advantage of by a leader. Now, Mormonism has its own story of a 14-year-old girl who was taken advantage of. We know what happened because uh, when this young woman grew up, had a family of her own, she wrote a letter to her children and grandchildren um, describing her introduction into celestial plural marriage with Joseph Smith when she was 14 years old. And the church has this. It has in her own hand an account of what happened. And it went something like this. Years passed away and we were living in the city of Nauvoo. Just previous to my father's starting upon his last mission but one to the eastern states, he taught me the principle of celestial marriage, and having a great desire to be connected with the prophet Joseph, he offered me to him. I will pass over the temptations which I had during the 24 hours after my father introduced to me this principle and asked me if I would be sealed to Joseph, who came next morning. And with my parents, I heard him teach and explain the principle of celestial marriage. After which he said to me, if you will take this step, it will ensure your eternal salvation and exaltation and that of your father's household and all of your kindred. This promise was so great that I willingly gave myself to purchase so glorious a reward. The objections that are usually met when people learn about this and then complain to their leaders is we need to remember that things were different back then. People got married when they were 14. The difficulty is that Joseph Smith was in his mid-30s when she was 14. That's a wide disparity. That was not typical. But that's not even the issue. The major issue here is the imbalance of power. You have a man who at the time is the prophet and president of the church who exerts a great deal of influence in the community and who this girl, since she was a young toddler, has revered as the man of God, the, the oracle of God, the person who conveys God's will on earth. And so for him to impose this request upon a young woman and then make it such that she would purchase the salvation of her whole family is such an inordinate degree of pressure that there's no way that this is considered consent. She was coerced into a relationship with Joseph Smith. Now, the next argument that you'll hear is that, well, it was just sealing. It wasn't sexual. But she, in her own writings, has acknowledged that she was then cloistered away from any relationship with any young men her age. She was kept saved for the prophet. Furthermore, if you look at uh, the Joseph Smith Papers website, where people raise the question of, could Joseph Smith's sealings include sexual relations? The answer is that, yes, any of the sealings that Joseph Smith had could include sexual relations because there was nothing that would prohibit it. So when we see this woman from Scientology recount her story of abuse as a 14-year-old, there are very strong parallels to the same types of abuses of power that happened in Joseph Smith's time. It's not about the age. It's about the imbalance of power, the ecclesiastical abuse. 
And people say, well, her parents consented, so it's okay. If you study dangerous leaders of groups that end up abusing and exploiting children, it is not uncommon for them to inculcate their parents because their parents are under the same undue influence and manipulation that everybody else in the group is. And so they allow those abuses to take place because they believe there's a higher law that facilitates it, or they believe that because God commanded it, it's okay when it otherwise would not be okay. Whatever God requires is right, said the prophet Joseph Smith.